Hello everyone to today's coffee talk session. My name is Madison. I'm the marketing executive at the Business Software Center and in today's session we are going to be talking about how to navigate the new commerce experience or phase three of the new commerce experience. I am just waiting for my computer to load currently so I know exactly what my next slide is going to be. All right, so going ahead and getting started, I just want to preface preface this conversation by saying we do have um, various Smarter Cloud Talk podcasts focusing specifically on the new commerce experience. Now these were done with interviews between me and our partner companies that are experts with the CSP to the NCE change. So if you're interested in podcasts, feel free to check us out on Spotify or SoundCloud. We do have blog posts available as well. And as always, you can email me info at Business Software Center if you have any questions. I can always um, <clears throat> supply you the answers through emails or at least get you in contact with somebody who knows a little bit more about the NCE. <clears throat> so if you uh, were part of the CSP program, you're probably familiar with um, just how different pricing and bundling was with Microsoft. And so basically their goal is to create a greater choice and flexibility. So something like using third party applications or just getting more third party um, apps involved in general in the uh, sales process, but then making it one solid price at the end of the purchase. And so this also gives partners more opportunities to sell a growing base of existing and uh, to a growing existing new customers. So basically what's going on is the CSP and like a couple other ways of making purchases for Microsoft 365 uh, was really complex. And so this was just a way of simplifying the process, helping customers stay happy, but then also having partners have good uh, customer retention. And so just to keep in mind that the subscriptions are changing as a consequence of Microsoft kind of simplifying the process for everybody. And so um, these have been implemented, so it's just something to, to keep an eye out on. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, it's it's time to get familiar just because um, key dates are have come and gone and these changes are, in, are have now been implemented. So you're going to be seeing three different subscription options. The first one being the monthly subscription, which is what maybe a lot of your customers are familiar with, with the CSP model. Um, there is no annual commitment with that. It's month to month and you can flex your subscribers up or down. So if your clients are interested in keeping this, um, just know it's going to be a 20% increase um, each monthly bill, just because um, you know, Microsoft just wants to transition and, and, and focus in a different direction. And this is just um, how they're planning on phasing it out is just they'll offer it still, but it's going to be 20% increase in price. So just keep that in mind and let your customers know that as well before kind of making this decision. Um, then we have the 12 month subscription and this can be billed either monthly or annually, um, but the price is locked the entire term. So once you agree upon a price, you know, um, say for instance, you have like 500 seats, you know exactly who your seat, what your seat count is, you can lock in that price. However, what's really nice about this is say you hire new employees, you can always increase your seat count, but still keep the price locked um, with the seat count increase. However, keep in mind that you cannot decrease your seat count. It's slightly different than the month to month CSP where you could do either up or down. This option does not let you subscribe, flex your subscribers down. So in that case, you know, it's worth getting like a software asset management team involved to just kind of see uh, where your benchmark is at currently. And I'll give you an example of that towards the end of my presentation. So the third subscription option is 36 months. And so this is a three year pricing for long term licensing commitments, but the same as the 12 month subscription, it's could either be billed monthly or annual, annually, and the price is also locked the entire term. And same thing goes for this. You can increase your seat count, but not decrease your seat count. So this is why it's important to kind of see where you're at before locking into a new subscription option, kind of evaluate how many subscribers do you have? How many can be reharvested? How many can be kind of, get, you know, getting rid of or whatever? Um, whether that's just past employees that no longer work for you and you're just continuously paying for a subscription that you're not using, or it's um, 
just like temporary staff that you kind of forgot that you have these licenses for. Um, it's really important to kind of analyze and see where you're at just so you can lock into the correct subscription option for your, you or your customers. So this is an example of the commercial terms and billing. So not only is the um, the cost changing, but you can see the cancellation policy is also changing. So with the CSP legacy, it says 30 days, but you can get your cancellation policy a lot more quickly when it comes to the new uh, commerce experience. You can see 72 hours. And an example they say for partner impact for this is it encourages long term commitment from customers and reduces churn, adds revenue forecasting, predictability for partners. So you can always just take a screenshot of this or find it on Microsoft's website just to kind of get a better idea of the other um, terms and billing that is ch changing compared to the CSP to the NCE. So what are the benefits of this change? So the new commerce experience is. Uh, a multi-stage, multi-year transformational journey to deliver a simplified engagement experience that benefits both Microsoft partners and customers. So I kind of reviewed that earlier um, because there are benefits for the customer. Obviously, it's a super easy process for them. It stream streamlines everything. It makes a lot more sense. Prices are easier to understand. Whereas with partners, this is a good opportunity to either upsell or you know um, add third-party products that maybe they they couldn't add before. Um, it's just a better way of kind of bundling off. So it makes trans transacting licenses and attach attaching and managing your services easier, accelerating your business growth and your customers' cloud adoption. So this is just a graph of what CSP looks like versus what the new commerce experience plans to be. And as you can see, it just goes program specific direct direct offers, and you can see it just has multiple channels that. Um, end users have to go through to kind of get what they need. Whereas with the new commerce experience, which you can see in the blue and purple graph, it, it has everything bundled together and then it shows one agreement for all customers, which includes um, uh, selling, advising, building and managing Microsoft, which is really nice. So as I mentioned earlier, key dates have already happened, and one of the key dates was the phase two date of 10th of March 2022. And so this is all customer subscriptions will now be agreed through the NCE and renewal of existing services by 30th June 2022. So just keep in mind that if you are getting new customers, you are now um, purchasing through the new commerce experience. If you have legacy customers, um, they'll have the continued 20% increase on their month to month subscriptions um, until 30th June 2022. In that case, I believe that they're going to have to fully switch to the NCE model afterwards. So this is just like an option for your clients if they're a little bit harder to make the transition from the CSP to NCE, at least they have this option. Um, of maintaining what they what they know now and kind of getting used to the idea of uh, switching the way they do things. So you can see that there has been other price increases as well. Just in general, Microsoft upped up their prices. And I, I would say the reason why they bundled these prices and up their prices is simply because they've They've made the process a lot easier for their partners and clients, but they're also including so much more benefits and features with these changes. So an example for Microsoft 365 Business Premium would be a 10% increase, et cetera. You can see all the different examples there. So the third phase, which is the um, focus of this conversation, is July 31st, 2022. And so now is really the time to start planning and figuring out how we're going to handle the third phase, which ends July 31st, 2022. And after that point, everyone needs to um, make their purchases through the Microsoft Commerce experience. So let me just go ahead and read this slide. It says partners can take a phased approach to adopt the new commerce experience and can continue to renew existing subscriptions in the legacy uh, CSP until the end of June 2022. So please keep that in mind. Um, everyone is going to have to switch eventually. And then, of course, as of July 2022, legacy subscriptions will be locked down and cannot be changed or altered. New experiences in the Partner Center for the Commerce Program Incentive um, will be available through the Microsoft. And then new incentive investment offers are being released that leverage this enhanced experience aimed at providing partners with more flexibility to grow their business. So Microsoft is certainly testing the waters out with some of the stuff. 
um, at the moment, like offering more business to business opportunities as well. Um, just kind of helping other third party um, Microsoft partners get to know each other's products and, and kind of team up and co-market in a way to kind of bundle their offers together and tag team it. Um, so that's something you can look forward to doing, um, but just know more opportunities are going to be made available to you to kind of boost your cloud business uh, with as of July 31st, 2022. So in the future, uh, Microsoft has quoted that they will continue to add, enhance, and expand and migrate new and existing incentive opportunities to the MCI program. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. Of course, if you are a Microsoft partner, you'll be receiving these updates. Um, but if you ever need updates in the future, please feel free to follow us on Eventbrite or on our social medias. I will try to uh, provide more information going forward on uh, what Microsoft plans on updating. So here's another key date though, January 1st of 2023, Microsoft incentives are available only for transactions in the new commerce experience. So if you have any subscriptions still active in the original CSP experience, you will no longer earn incentives. So this is another, uh, another factor to consider uh, getting your end users, your clients switched over to the MCE is you will start losing your longer incentives. Uh, after January 1st, 2023. So I mean, you still have time to figure this out, but I think as far as like my advice goes is you really should start thinking about this now. Um, consider the NCE adoption journey. So here at the Business Software Center, we offer um, software asset management products and our biggest one is Smarter SaaS. And so this can look specifically at Microsoft products and kind of give you a gauge of who the users are, what you're paying for versus what's not being used, what can you recycle, what can you reharvest, what exactly do you have a surplus in? So we, we provide um, ways of giving savings to yourself or your end users, but then we also have a really in-depth report and analysis and then our recommendations go on top of that on how uh, how you can go moving forward with the NCE. Well, we can give you advice on where you're currently at, kind of give you a benchmark of exactly what is being used versus what's not being used and kind of figure out, OK, um, what can we lock into with this either 12 month or 36 month contract with Microsoft? So it is an automated tool. It's really easy to use. We do offer a free trial, so I would suggest definitely signing up for that. You can always email me info at Business Software Center to get the free trial. And we've been um, listening to our partner and end user feedback, and we've actually made some new uh, features to Smarter SaaS, which will be launched in March, I'm sorry, in May, at the end of May, 2022. So one of the new benefits of Smarter SaaS is that we're going to have a lot easier setups. You know, these setups were easy in the first place. It only took maybe 10 minutes, but now it only takes like two or three. It's super easy to do. Um, and then we can get you a health check or on our production service. The health check lasts about 30 days, but then it, you can switch to the production service and either pay month to month or annually just to kind of get a, a benchmark of where you're at and then monitor um, throughout the process of where you're going. Now, this is especially important if you're locking into these contracts with Microsoft, because if you're um, signing these contracts, you have to remain compliant. And so having a software asset management tracking tool like this can help ensure that you are remaining compliant with your licensing agreements. Um, so we do have automated email reporting. So if you're one of our partners or interested in becoming our partner, uh, this will be a really good opportunity for you to just keep tabs with your end users by scheduling monthly reports to go out to your users. And then we did, we did also add uh, new reporting on apps like SharePoint OneDrive Exchange. Now Teams is something we definitely track and monitor now, but we've added SharePoint OneDrive and Exchange. Um, so that's another uh, benefits and features you can look forward to. So if you're interested in learning more about the new features of Smarter SaaS, I would say just sign up for our webinar launch, which is the 24th May at 2, p uh, 2 p.m. You can sign up through Eventbrite or email me and I can send you the link. Um, it's really vital to kind of just get this all done before the big changes in July with Microsoft. And it, this would give you the perfect opportunity to get the data that you need to make the best decisions for your business or your client's business moving forward. So thank you for um, listening to me today. If you want to join our mailing list um, or just get involved a little bit more, have any questions, please do email me info at businesssoftwarecenter.com. Just want to thank you again for joining our coffee talk today and I'm going to end the live stream here.
let me go ahead and end it. Thank you so much again. And if you have any questions, once again, please do email me. Thank you. Bye bye.